welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm Alice. I woke up to my mom scream. My sister Lucy, who was sitting right beside me, was shrieking, bees, bees! Then I heard my dad's voice inside the car. Ouch, the bee stung my eye! The last thing I heard was my mom screaming from the passenger seat, honey, watch out! Then our car started flipping. Suddenly, we were off the road. I was too sleepy to figure out what was happening. After a few flips in the air, our car fell down hard. The moment we hit the ground was terrible. My family loves camping. We spend all our vacations at national parks. The United States has 63 national parks in total. So far, we've camped in 39 of them. Our goal is to do them all. That day, we had left for our 40th national park. But unfortunately, we had a huge accident on the way. Later, I found out that my sister Lucy had pulled down her window to get some fresh air when suddenly a swarm of bees rushed in. My mom and my sister panicked. My dad was trying to calm them down, but when one of the bees stung my dad in his eye, he lost control of the steering wheel. After our car did a few flips in the air and crashed on the ground, I felt a sharp pain in my head and lost consciousness. I had no idea at the time, but I went into a coma. When I opened my eyes, there was a girl my age standing in front of me. She was sobbing. I looked around bewildered. Everything was drenched in white. This place didn't look like anywhere I'd been before. It almost seemed like another dimension. I looked at the girl. What is this place? Why are you crying? I asked. She kept on crying without answering any of my questions. Suddenly, the sky turned dark. That white expanse was now a dark void. My eyelids got heavier. I fell back into a deep sleep. When I opened my eyes, it was still dark. A month or an hour could have passed. I realized I was hearing some sounds. They were very faint at first, then they got closer. Someone was crying again, but this time the voice was familiar. It was my sister's. I couldn't see her, but I could still hear her. Then I heard my mom's voice. Lucy, please, honey, stop blaming yourself. <laughs> Mom, I'm going to blame myself for this forever. This awful accident was all my fault. Alice is in a coma because of me. If I hadn't opened the window, the bees would have never rushed inside. That was a huge shock. I had just found out from my sister that I was in a coma. I was most probably in a hospital right now. Well, crying won't help Alice now. I'm sure she'll be out of this coma soon and show you that you cried for nothing. Lucy said, Mom, it's been exactly three months and six days. I'm losing hope, and went back to crying. I would love to give my sister a hug and say, you couldn't have known that the bees would fly in. Of course it's not your fault. I was just unlucky. But I was unable to open my eyes. I couldn't move my mouth. I could hear my mom and my sister, but there was no way to let them know that I was hearing them because I was in a coma. Later, I found myself in that completely white space again. That girl was there too. Since I was in a coma, was this a dream? I'm glad you're not crying this time. I'm Alice. Who are you? I asked. She replied nervously. I'm, I'm Emma, but I, I only know my name. I don't remember anything else except for that. Emma, it's okay for you to not remember because you're probably a figment of my imagination, I said. She got angry and screamed. No, I'm real. I'm sure of that. I heard voices coming from the outside. Someone was in the room. A woman's voice said, Tomorrow is a big day. The lawyer will come and check on Emma for the last time. Everything needs to go according to plan. If Emma wakes up, we're toast. Let's go talk to the doctor and let them know the lawyer will be here. I was surprised when she mentioned the name Emma. Was the Emma she was talking about the same Emma I had just met? A man's voice answered her. Honey, stop worrying. Look at Emma. Do you think she's going to wake up anytime soon? Just like everyone else, the lawyer too will think she's in a coma, he replied. Suddenly, everything became clear. I wasn't the only patient in the room. I had a roommate named Emma. She was apparently in a coma as well. She was lying in the bed next to me. It's hard to explain, but even though both of us were comatose, we were able to communicate. I turned to Emma. <gasps> you are real, I yelled with joy. Then I added, I think your visitors don't like you very much. Who are they? Emma was surprised. <gasps> visitors? Where am I? Who came to visit me? She asked. Apparently, Emma wasn't able to hear the conversations I was hearing. 
Even if she could, she wouldn't be able to remember who this man and woman were because she'd lost her memory. Since Emma was real, first I had to tell her my own story. I told her about the car crash, falling into a coma, and hearing all the voices in the room. Emma couldn't believe what she was hearing when I told her we were both comatose, lying in our consecutive beds in a hospital room. So how do you think I fell into this coma? She asked. There's something off about that, I replied, repeating to her what I heard from the man and the woman in the room. Emma paused when I told her how the man had said, just like everyone else, the lawyer too will think she's in a coma. What does that mean? Am I not in a coma then? She asked. I don't know, but I have a feeling we're going to find out soon, I responded. The next day, something strange happened. First, I felt the room go dark. Then I sensed a flood of light that illuminated everything. I cracked my eyes open. I glanced around the room. In a faint voice, I said, hello world. I had finally made it out of the coma. Emma lay motionless in the bed next to me. I wouldn't be able to communicate with her because I was no longer comatose. It made me sad to think of that, but maybe I could help her in some way. I decided not to leave this room without first figuring out what happened to Emma. I closed my eyes. I decided that no one was supposed to know I had come out of my coma, at least for a while. Later that night, our door opened. I cracked my eyes open. A doctor, a man, and a woman walked in. The doctor listened to Emma's heart with his stethoscope. After checking the monitor over her head, he said, her heart beats very weak. She's not really in a coma, but she looks like she is thanks to the drugs I'm giving her. I'll keep her in this condition as long as you keep paying me. The woman was upset. You don't have to tell us that. We're paying you good money, she replied. As far as I know, Emma's inheritance from her grandfather is more than $50 million. You can bet that I deserve more than a few hundred thousand dollars you're throwing at me, he said as he abruptly left. The man held the woman's hand. Don't be upset, love. The lawyer will come here and confirm that your stepdaughter Emma is in a coma. Then you will get her entire inheritance as her legal guardian, he said. When they left the room, I began to think about what I had heard. I put the pieces of the puzzle together and figured out what had happened. This woman was Emma's stepmother. The man was her boyfriend. Emma had inherited $50 million from her grandfather. Emma's stepmother made an awful plan to take that inheritance from her. She made a deal with one of the doctors at the hospital, and he had made Emma fall into a coma with those drugs. When the lawyer confirmed she was in a coma, Emma's whole inheritance would go to her stepmother. But where was Emma's father? I was sure I was going to find out when the timing was right. The next day, I woke up to my sisters crying. She and my mother were there to visit me. I couldn't open my eyes because they weren't supposed to know that I'd come out of my coma. At that moment, Emma's stepmother entered the room. There was an older man with her. He was probably the lawyer they were talking about yesterday. She began shedding crocodile tears. <laughs> Unfortunately, my dear daughter's condition is the same. The doctors are saying the chances of her coming out of this coma are very low. Stroking her hair, the lawyer said, Poor girl, I've known her since she was a little kid. It's so sad to see her like this. Then he took out some documents from his briefcase. In this case, is Emma's legal guardian, you will receive the inheritance in her place. You need to sign these documents, he said. Emma's stepmother could barely hide her excitement. I think that was my cue. I had to intervene before it was too late. Suddenly, I opened my eyes. My mom and my sister screamed in unison. Stop! She shouldn't sign those documents! Emma's not in a real coma. They've been drugging her! I yelled. Then I told them everything I knew. When the truth came out, Emma's stepmother ran out of the room. The lawyer said to me, Thank you so much. You prevented a huge mistake from happening. If you allow me, I'll go have this woman arrested. I'll do everything in my power to get her and her boyfriend in prison. And left the room as well. I turned to my sister and mom. I opened my arms and yelled, Hi! They both hugged me with joy. My sister said, I can't believe it. You woke up, but you hid it from us so you could play detective? Shedding happy tears, my mom said, Let's call your dad now. He needs to know about this incredible story. <laughs> Lucy looked at Emma, who was still lying in her bed. Thankfully, she'll come out of this coma. Alice, I'm so proud of you, sis, she said. <laughs> in the following days, Emma's stepmother, her boyfriend, and the doctor were arrested. As soon as the drugs wore off, Emma woke up from her comatose state. Unfortunately, she lost her father last year. The police now think Emma's stepmother could be responsible for that as well. Now that she didn't have anybody, my parents offered Emma to become a part of our family. She loved that idea. Now, we all live together. 
By the way, you might be wondering about the inheritance. Well, Emma received the money, but hasn't touched it since she doesn't need it for now. She'll decide what to do with it when the time comes.